Welcome back to the show. Today on this episode, I'm calling it Build Your Foundation. Build Your Foundation comes from the title of my fourth book by the same title called Build Your Foundation. And what I share in the book comes from um, weekly emails that I've been sending out to several thousand people for the last several years. And I just pulled some of those stories and those concepts into that book. So I want to share a few parts of Build Your Foundation. And if you look behind me, you see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And I think that's a great uh, idea, a great metaphor for you and I to be conscious of the foundation that we build in our own lives. So in chapter 14 of my book, Build Your Foundation, I call it the trap of the treadmill. Let me share it with you. In my book, Rising from the Hood, The Cure for America's Cities, there's a chapter called The Herd, H-E-R-D, which includes this excerpt from a 2005 article in the Washington Post. I wrote, quote, It all started with one destructive leap. Shepherds eating breakfast outside the town of Gives, Turkey, were surprised to see a lone sheep jump off a, nearly, a nearby cliff and fall to its death. They were stunned, however, when the rest of the nearly 500, or rather 1,500 sheep in the herd followed, each leaping off the same cliff. When it was all over, the local newspaper reported 450 sheep perished in a billowy white pile. Those that jumped from the middle and end of the herd were saved as the pile became higher and the fall more cushioned. The estimated loss to the families of this particular town tops $100,000. An extremely significant amount of money in a country where the average person earns $2,700 per year. There's nothing we can do. They're all wasted, said a man who's a member of 26 families whose sheep were grazing together in the herd. Now, in this chapter of my book, Build Your Foundation, there are hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions, who live their lives on the treadmill. They get on it every morning and don't get off until they go to sleep. They follow the same routine and, and do what others do because others are doing it. I'll never forget the words of Charles Tremendous Jones, who said, you will be the same person in five years as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. That quote has stuck with me for many, many years. Think about the sheep in the story I just shared. Imagine for a moment if the great Michael Jordan did not take advice and coaching from Phil Jackson. Would he have achieved his incredible scores he was able to achieve? No one really knows, but we can all assume he would have certainly done less than he achieved. Many people make a decision not to place themselves in situations where they can learn and grow. And then over time, they begin to tilt because their foundation gets all wonky. The trap of the treadmill is designed to entice you to maybe think that if others are doing a thing, then maybe you should be too. So here's a few questions I write in, in the book to ask yourself to see if you might be trapped by the treadmill in your life. First question, does my life look the same as it did a year ago? Again, does your life look the same as it does or did a year ago? Have I read books about people who are doing what I imagine myself doing? I cannot overemphasize this point enough. If you are not reading books by and or about successful people, you are not going to grow and reach a level that maybe deep down in your soul, in your heart, that you want to achieve. Third question, am I doing what I'm doing because of the pressure of other people? I mean, there's people you know that are in careers that they have no interest in being in, but they're in it because of the pressure of other people. The great coach Vince Lombardi said, we would accomplish many more things if we did not think of them as impossible. And it really all starts with a mindset, doesn't it? It, it, takes, it takes a tremendous amount of effort 
to, to maybe jump out of that comfort zone and do things that maybe you think other people don't think you can do. So I'm asking you today in this chapter of my book, Build Your Foundation, to, to break from the herd and to stop the treadmill and to begin living your life and maybe instead of maybe somebody else's life. Build your foundation. In chapter 15, I call the chapter your life sentence, your life sentence. If you've ever had the opportunity to write a life sentence for yourself, that is a, a sentence that describes where you're going in life, what would it say? Most people never consider a life sentence for themselves. Someone once said, that those who don't have a clear life goal for themselves are average and ordinary. I know that you're not one of those people because you are watching these shows or reading good books. John Maxwell said, if you grow, you will change. If you grow, you will change. In an inverse statement, if you want to change, you need to grow. The truth is that most people are afraid to grow. Or worse, they have no interest in growing. Then complain that their life is the same old, same old. Here's one secret of really successful people that a lot of well-known people know, that change is key to their massive success. I read a story a long time ago. There was two guys that went to work, and each of them brought their lunch pail, and they're eating their lunch. And day after day, one of the guys were complaining about the lunch. Oh, it's the same old sandwich, same old piece of fruit, same this, same that. Just whining and complaining to the guy next to him. Well, after several days of hearing this guy whine, his buddy, who was eating his lunch, just spoke up and said, well, why don't you ask your wife to fix something different? He goes, my wife, I, I fix my own lunches. I think that's a metaphor for you and I, that oftentimes, not always, we fix our own lunches and then we start complaining about why things are the way they are when we are, generally speaking, in control of what we fix. Not always, mind you, but more times than not. Again, the key to change is, is, is really having, in, in other words, to have massive success in your life, you have to be willing to change consistently. They understand that they cannot change the past, but they can use the past as a stepping stone and not a stumbling block. That's hard to do for a lot of us. They realize that maybe their, their personal attitude should mirror their potential. I can remember way back in 1983, I was working in a particular place that was uh, very depressing. I mean, I was literally working in a, in a, a small pitch black room. That was my job. To, it was, I was working in a lab, and I had to work in a, in a pitch black room. And it was very depressing for me. But I was afraid to do things that were outside of my comfort zone because I didn't think I had the capacity to do things that were outside of my comfort zone. So I allowed that depression to grow and grow and grow until it reached a point where I had to literally or figuratively grab myself by the collar and pull myself out of an environment and throw myself into a different environment that completely was foreign, but it forced me to do things and learn things that I'm still using 30 years later, 33, 34 years later. If your actions have been inconsistent with where you want to go in life, then you need to try something. Actually try several things, several ideas that I write in the book. Stop complaining about anything. Stop complaining about anything. I can remember the first time we traveled to St. Petersburg, Russia, we got off of the plane and I was a lot younger then, a lot more stupid than I am now. We got off the plane and we walked into the airport and I started complaining about this and that, about their airport, their country. And I was getting pretty loud about it too. And above us were guys with big rifles. I mean, real rifles that were patrolling the perimeter of the airport. And one of the fathers that we were traveling with, in polite ways, he said, John, shut up. He didn't use those words, but he was trying to be polite about it. He said, John, 
button it up. Sometimes you and I get into the habit of complaining and whining about things that really we have no reason to complain and whine about it because when we whine and complain about stuff, it doesn't change what we're going through, does it? In fact, it makes what we're going through that's bad bigger, doesn't it? Stop using negative words. Stop using negative words. There are a lot of people in your circle, I know, because they're in my circle too, that use negative words all the time. They whine and complain. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but those whining and complaining words messes with your head. They do. So for me, at my age right now, I choose not to hang around those people as much as possible. Sometimes you're forced into a situation where you're, you have to have a meal with them or it's the holidays and they come over and you do certain things. But I, I have forced myself because it, it was getting to me to such a point that I started echoing their sentiment. I started echoing their negative attitude and then I started whining and complaining more than I ever have. So I realized that was happening so I got away from them because it was, it was causing me to tilt. It was causing me to, my foundation to, to crumble. Maybe you should write down one sentence that describes where you want to go in life, but write it in the present tense. That is, I am a, or I am going, or I am blank, or whatever that is. Because when you put it in the present tense, and you keep that in front of you all the time, it's incredible how it literally changes the way you see yourself. Think about that a second. When you use it in the present tense and look at it in, in, in a certain way and keep that in front of you all the time, you start believing what's written down in front of you. And that probably sounds a little weird to some people, but it really does. It impacts you in such a way that forces your mind to believe that you are what you're writing that you are. On the inverse, when you write down and keep saying things that are negative, then your brain starts making that happen. Let's flip the same coin over. When you start writing things down, I am a blank, a good thing, guess what happens? Your mind starts making that a reality. So write it down in the present tense. Understand that personal growth comes from consistent internal change. Again, personal growth comes from consistent internal change. There's a lot of people I've met over the years that they, they think they can get better by doing certain practices once in a while. I cannot overemphasize the importance of you to you about consistency. Daily, consistent habits that will generate change in your life that will be dramatic over a very short period of time instead of doing things sporadically, doing things when you feel like it or when the mood hits you. Most people that succeed in life in a fantastic, in a great way, do things whether they feel like it or not. They do the hard things whether they want to or not. You have the same exact capacity as every other human being on earth, regardless of your past. You say, well, John, I've done some pretty awful things in my past, or I've gone through some very difficult times in my past. Well, if you read books about people, successful people in life, if the people writing these books are very transparent, you're going to see that they've gone through stuff far, far worse than you've gone through. So if they can achieve a level of success in their life, and they've gone through some really difficult times, then that must mean that you can do the same thing. That must mean that I can do the same thing because other people have done it and they've gone through a lot, lot worse. You got to read, read, read. In today's society, man, people are, are just not into reading like they were not even 20, 30, 40 years ago. Force yourself to go to the library and get books on self-development. If you can't afford them, go to the library or buy them online. Read the books consistently. Model some of the behavior so that your, your tower doesn't start to tilt because it was built on, an, on, a, on, a, on a foundation that's not very solid.
You can be on the edge of realizing something incredible if you don't quit, if you keep going, even though on the inside it's getting really hard. There, there's many times on the, when I'm on the bike at the gym and I have a personal goal of say five miles that, that day on the bike that come mile four, it happens almost every day, that come mile four, I'm thinking, you know, that's enough, four miles is enough. You know, I'm a certain age and you know, I, I don't need to be pushing to five miles or six or seven miles, I, and this is enough. But I have to remind myself that I told myself when I walked into the gym, I was going to do five miles today. So I push myself through the discomfort of pushing through that extra mile or two because I told myself that I gave myself an order that I'm going to do this regardless. So think about some of these habits that I've just shared with you so far that can help you maybe dramatically change your life in such a way that your foundation is going to be built up a lot more solidly than it ever has been. In chapter 22 of my book, Build Your Foundation, I share this. The chapter is called The Snooze Button. Most of us hit the snooze button from time to time. That little button on top of your alarm clock that gives you a few precious extra minutes between the sheets before you have to get up and face the world. Several of my children find it difficult to wake up in the morning. One night, very late, all of our smoke detectors went off at the same time for some strange reason. Now, we have a seven bedroom house with about nine smoke detectors on the top floor and every one of them was screaming. All but one of our children slept right through the commotion. We have six kids. All but one of them slept through it. They're just snoozing away. Other times, before I leave for the office, I walk up and down the hall and say, okay, kitty poos, time to get up, 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 up. It's my, of tr my way, rather, of trying to get them up and about to go to school and do their schoolwork. And, but there are some, again, some of our kids that are just really hard to get up. How many people have you met who have all the talent in the world, maybe raw talent at best, waiting to be developed, yet they'll find it very difficult to stop hitting the snoo snooze button and they just keep hitting it over and over again. They don't want to get up and get going. Dottie Lazard said, to truly live life, we must do the things we believe we cannot. Again, to truly live life, we must do the things we believe we cannot. People keep hitting the snooze button in their lives because they think they cannot accomplish what they're clearly capable of, but they don't see it in their own lives. Greatness is always really preceded by a desire to be great and to disconnect the snooze button. Somebody, I cannot remember her name for the life of me at the moment, she gives herself the, the, the five second rule. When most days she doesn't want to get out of bed, so she gives her, her name's Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins is her name. She gives herself five seconds, so she lays there in bed, five, four, three, two, one, and then leaps out of bed because she knows that if she gets to one, she must force herself to do things, or she does the same five second countdown. If she's, in, if she's challenged to do a task that she is terrified to do, she gives herself the same five second rule. Maybe that'll work for you. Again, it's from Mel Robbins. Look her up. She has some great talks on YouTube. Malcolm Gladwell wrote, once a musician has enough ability to get into the top music school, the thing that distinguishes one performer from another is how hard he or she works. That's it, he writes. And what's more, the people at the very top don't work just harder, even much harder than everyone else. They work much, much harder. The passive people are left behind. You assume, you and I assume that the people at the top are now just grazing. They're just, they've made it, so they've, they've, they're, they're kind of milking it. They're just floating. Well, in fact, when you look at their daily schedule, it's two, three, four times more intense than everybody around them because they know internally that they will never arrive. They'll never, they'll never achieve whatever greatness they have achieved because they know that once they stop, it starts eroding. The, the foundation of their lives starts to deplete. 
And then their tower, if you will, in and, and, and quotes, starts over time to, to tilt. Maybe you know people who were raised in homes where everyone lived a, a snooze button centered life. Maybe, maybe they never quite got off the ground, but that doesn't have to be you. In fact, research shows by some scientists that it takes an average of 10,000 hours of work to be viewed as someone who's successful in their area of life. So based on that assessment, how can people believe they can reach their goals in life by stopping and starting all the time? One of my favorite authors who lived over 100 years ago, his name's Orison Sweat Marden. He wrote, quote, success is not measured by what you accomplish, but by the opposition you have encountered and the courage with which you have maintained the struggle against overwhelming odds. Let me share it again. Orison Sweat Marden wrote this 100 years ago. Success is not measured by what you accomplish, but by the opposition you have encountered and the courage with which you have maintained the struggle against overwhelming odds. My recommendation to you is don't run from those odds. Embrace them. Jump from your bed in the morning, take on the world, and create a life instead of really allowing others to create one for you. Maybe live, live a life that, that, that you want and not what's handed to you. Consistent concentration, I think, really is, is what gets you closer to your dreams more than any other thing. Leverage that personal power and watch your life change before your eyes in such a dramatic way that you're going to look up one day and realize, holy smokes, I'm way farther ahead than most people around me. In chapter 23 in my book, Build Your Foundation, it's called They Struggle Too. They Struggle Too. I, I can remember way back as a kid feeling that I was the only one with fear and intimidation and, and self-doubt and hang-ups. The older I got and the more I became a student of people, I realized that most people struggle too in some form or fashion. Very few people have it all together. Take dyslexia, for example. Did you know that Pablo Picasso and Tom Cruise and Richard Branson and Leonardo da Vinci and Thomas Edison and Henry Winkler and Jay Leno, among many others, have that condition, that struggle? Some people suffer from mood disorders like Abraham Lincoln and Britney Spears and Richard Dreyfuss and Harrison Ford and Ben Stiller, Carrie Fisher and so many others, Bruce Jenner, Terry Bradshaw, Jackie Stewart, John Chambers all suffered from ADHD, if that's a real thing, right? So many people, are, they, they, have, they have a fear of flying, like Cher and Whippy Goldberg. Billy Bob Thornton is afraid of antique furniture. Johnny Depp and Daniel Radcliffe and, and Sean Combs is frightened of clowns. Country singer Lyle Levitt is terrorized by cows. Nicole Kidman fears butterflies. Madonna is afraid of or at least was afraid of thunder. Woody Allen is afraid of insects, sunshine, dogs, deer, bright colors, children, heights, small rooms, crowds, cancer, and anywhere except Manhattan. A Harris poll found that 86% of adults and 91% of youngsters admitted to being very afraid of something. Nearly one in five adults also said they were scared of more things now than they were as a child. These are just a few examples of the problems faced by celebrities who many people assume that they have it all together. What about you? What about me? Are you going to let your insecurities and past mistakes and fears and hang-ups keep you from identifying and chasing your dreams? I'm asking you today not to allow that to happen. Surround yourself with people who believe in you and will encourage you to stay on course regardless of what struggles you face in your life. That's, one, that's another reason why I send out weekly emails every Saturday morning. These emails are called a blog. I send out these blogs to inspire, to motivate, and, and selfishly, honestly, and candidly to remind myself to keep going. 
to keep developing myself, because if I keep developing myself with a focus on developing and helping other people, then it's a win-win. It's a win for the person I'm trying to help, and it's a win for me too, because I'm trying to stay up on what I need to stay up on. So when you look at your own foundation, right, you know, you see it right there in the distance, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. When you look at that, look throughout history, that's been up for hundreds of years, look at your own life. Look at your own foundation, and you still have time to adjust the foundation in your life. Because if you adjust it now, there's still time to keep your foundation level and your life and living a life that's beyond your wildest imaginations. My name is John Carver. I do believe in you very, very much. And I know that you have what it takes to be extraordinary. Thanks for watching and we'll be back real soon.